เราเห็นกันแล้วว่าฟู้ดเทคคือคลื่นลูกใหม่แห่งวงการอาหารแต่สิ่งที่น่าสนใจและเป็นประเด็นที่คนตั้งคำถามต่อก็คือเราจะนำเทคโนโลยีนี้มาสร้างอีโคซิสเต็มอาหารของไทยให้แข็งแกร่งยิ่งขึ้นได้อย่างไรใน Thailand the difference between Thailand and other cuisine is that we have a very strong competitive advantage in Thai culture in Thai food or what we often refer to as the soft power of Thailand so what I believe can be an interesting opportunity for Thai food tech is to blend the so-called soft power or cultural export of food and the hard science of food tech together for example there's a new food tech startup At uh, Maidon University, that try to blend the Thai spice and herbs. We look at the combination of different type s p i c e and herbs into things like tom yum or all the curries that we know, and we use the new technology, new science to extract and try to fuse that into the new value proposition of products. Things like nutraceuticals, functional food, personalized food, regenerative food, all these new trends. Came from the bigger mega trend of health and wellness. However, we cannot treat these people as just one group of people because I often see when food tech or other products try to look at this segment, they often lump these people into one segment of health-conscious consumers. But this trend has been going on for years, and we have to look deeper into these segments. เมื่อโจทย์ของอาหารในอนาคตไม่ได้มีแค่เรื่องรสชาติหรือสุขภาพแต่คือความรับผิดชอบต่อโลกและผู้บริโภค2ด่านหินที่เราต้องก้าวข้ามให้ได้คือการจัดการเวสในระบบและมาตรฐานเซฟตี้ของอาหารซึ่งเทคโนโลยีคือคำตอบของเรื่องนี้ Thailand is an agri-food powerhouse which means we generate a lot of waste from agricultural residues in the fields to buy products from our processing industries from a scientific field The main challenge isn't a lack of ideas, but making the solution practical and economically viable. This is where the major research trends come in. The focus has shifted from simply waste disposal to waste valorization, turning these materials into valuable products. We're moving towards a biorefinery concept. We extract value from every single component of the waste. For instance, at our Faculty of Science, we have several exciting projects. In our biotechnology department, researchers like n a t u i n i a m s i r i are engineering microbes to convert food industry waste into biodegradable bioplastics. This is a perfect example of a circular economy solution. When we work in the food industry, uh, food production. Food safety is the key issue. Is the main thing that you need to consider. So our solution, our innovation that we have been working for over 15 years, is an innovation that we use bacterial phages. Um, this is like a deep tech, biotech that we try to plug it in into the food system to control the contamination, to control uh, diseases. That can be present on the food nowadays. Technologies, AI tools, biosensing. When we focusing on this, uh, we think about speed. We think about accuracy. We think about something that it will be the tools for early detection, for something that we can uh, have like early warning sign uh, in terms of safety in our food product. I think this is something that you need to take. Technology, advanced technology that, with the key tools that is rapid and accuracy, uh, high accuracy uh, to to help with uh, early warning and early detection. แต่นวัตกรรมที่ล้ำสมัยบางครั้งก็อาจจะไปไม่ถึงฝั่งฝันหากขาดแรงส่งที่จะพาไปสู่ตลาดจริงเมื่อไอเดียต้องการเวทีและองค์กรใหญ่ต้องการความสดใหม่การจับมือกันระหว่างคอร์เปอเรทและสตาร์ทอัพจะเป็นการสร้างอิมแพคให้เกิดขึ้นจริงได้ The reason that we we do believe in the in the potential of startups is because they're quite agile. The way they make decisions is like really really fast, and this can bring that kind of spirit into a big corporation like ours. Sustainability is a big it's a big task ahead of us, and no one entity can solve the, these issues. Not the private sector alone, not the public sector alone, not startups alone. 
So this really calls for, for strong collaboration. So in terms of startups, we really value their fresh perspective. We cannot underestimate the power of energy and inspiration. So I'll give an example of how we tackle sustainable sourcing. Through a collaboration with Space Up, we have actually been able to choose one pilot startup that we're working with for our dairy farms. We're actually trying to work with them to look at how we could increase the yield of the cows. We're in the middle of the pilot to see if it's something we can scale for the future. So working with startups, and we've been working with Space Up for the past two years already. And I have to say, it's, it's a journey. It's not like a sprint, it's rather a marathon that we have to really keep trying to, to unlock certain solutions. Throughout this journey, we've learned that the challenges remain to be cost. The second one is skill. Um, much as we want to, to work with startups, it's marrying this scale of a big corporation and the agility of a small startup to find the sweet spot in between that continues to be a challenge. And the third is quality. In Nestle, we can never compromise quality. That's at the heart of, apart from sustainability, quality is something that we uphold to the highest, highest standards. For example, circularity in packaging. I would like to mention, for example, Milo. So Milo is right now with um, about 400 plus schools within hand in hand with the BMA in order to recycle UHD cartons. We're trying to also enable other waste management options such as co-processing. A higher form of waste to energy wherein we actually burn plastic into new fuel. In terms of sustainability, I just don't talk about sustainability in terms of planet, but also sustainability of the business. It's kind of like a chicken and egg. So that being said, um, it is imperative that we, we find um, aligned goals with startups that really point out to uh, commercial opportunities that also tend to address our, our sustainability goals. Time to change the world that changed. The road of food tech is not a road that is going to be changed by the new world. But it's a way to change the world that we have. And to use the new world that we have. The most important thing is that we have to focus on the right place to make the real world of food tech in the future. So what is the path forward for Thailand? It's about integration and focus. The path is to integrate the world of food tech It's about integration and focus. The path is to integrate the bench to pilot to market model. We must focus on national efforts on high potential value chains where we have an abundance of raw materials like cassava, rice residues, and fruit peels. The point is that instead of just chasing the new trends, the so-called new money, the money that doesn't exist yet, what I want to advocate for is for technologists and innovators to look at the, where the money is, the actual sectors that we have. Because these are the people from agriculture to food processing, harvesting, and food service. They need better technologies too. They need technologies to improve the efficiency, to improve productivity. So apart from the focus area of circularity, the other one is regenerative agriculture. So sustainability is kind of, you would say, neutral, but, um, and what we're trying to avoid is degenerative. So regenerative agriculture is going beyond sustainability, and you want it to be like going positive. We're restoring the soil, we're restoring the farms. Startup, like deep tech startup, we're coming uh, out as like showing off what we have and that is really wow but how to actually be have it more applicable to our customers this is something that we really need to work hard it's like customer oriented so um that being said it's a it's a long journey ahead of us because if people don't change their their behavior we're not gonna we're not gonna reach far right Our, our, our words to, to the whole Thai public is really that every little act matters. 